The Lexus RX was redesigned in 2016. In 2020, it was freshened up with new front and rear fascia. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto were made standard and the infotainment screen became a touchscreen. Fast forward to 2022, I have the Lexus RX 450h F Sport all-wheel drive and this year new color options and new fog lights are made as a standalone option. Today I'm going to give you three likes and dislikes to help you in your research process to see if whether or not this vehicle is right for you. The H in 450 stands for hybrid. I'll talk about the engine in just a moment. This comes in two main trim levels, base and F Sport. There's also an L version. This is a two row but the L version is a three row SUV. Now when you hear hybrid you probably don't think towing capacity but this can tow up to 3,500 pounds when properly equipped which means small trailers and motorcycles should be no problem. Now with this one we're looking at a 3.5 liter V6 with an electronically controlled CVT combined horsepower just over 300, 308 and this has all-wheel drive once again and ground clearance just in case you're curious 8.2 inches and fuel economy is an impressive 30 miles per gallon in mixed driving. My number one like is going to be passenger room. I've got two little ones and so I require two car seats wherever I go as long as they're coming with us and right here you can see two full-size car seats front facing and both kids can fit in there comfortably and I still have room here along the floor to put their diaper bags and extra materials there and supplies also a little bit of room in between probably not enough for a full-size adult not to sit comfortably but when I sat back there sitting behind the driver's seat which is my position that you see right here I've got enough room between my knees and the back of the seat even with a little bit of a slope behind the driver's seat so passenger room is a big plus for me considering I've got a family of four and this does seat up to five somewhat comfortably number one dislike compared to its competition is cargo space. Naturally, if you have the L version with three rows, your cargo space is a lot more because you have a longer wheelbase. It's around 57 cubic feet with all the rows filtered down. But with two rows here, our total capacity is just over 32 cubic feet. Now this is a 40, 20, 40 fold down split and you can fold those down with these levers off the right. I can't obviously because I have a pair of car seats right here. But behind the back row, you have 16 cubic feet of cargo space plenty for groceries and small items suitcases and and things like that but compared to its competition this is below average so this is definitely has to be one of the cons of this vehicle my number two like and dislike can be showcased right here in the cabin and it has to do with technology now let's go with the positive first of all we have a 12.3 inch touchscreen standard is 8 inch but since we have all the bells and whistles on our tester this week we've got the 12.3 inch screen and as i mentioned in the beginning this is a touch screen as of 2020. so you've got the great services up here plenty of options for bluetooth apple carplay android auto when you hook it up via usb but bluetooth without the usb in here you also have a flat surface for a wireless charging pad this slot right here is good for your phone to prop it up when you're not using it cup holders naturally we have different drive modes, which I'll showcase here in a little bit, which goes from Eco, Normal, Custom, Sport S, and Sport S Plus, which I like quite a bit. There's also a heads-up display straight on, so when I'm driving, I can turn that on or off, so I can see all the different details I need to see there. Plus, all the steering wheel mounted controls are easy to understand and standard with the Lexus brand. Steering wheel mounted paddle shifters as well. Now, let's move on to the negative with the technology so technology in general is good you got some added benefits with the huge touchscreen but it's the trackpad or the touchpad that's still a challenge now a few years ago they had the mouse pad right here then they upgraded to this trackpad which is more of a touch uh, sensitive uh, pad but it is distracting and a little difficult to maintain uh, accuracy while you're driving uh, on the screen above here which is helpful that they made the adjustment to a touchscreen option but still down here is not one of my favorites and if you get in here and start figuring it out you'll see what I'm talking about this takes a little bit longer to get used to I prefer not having that at all all right like number three now that I'm behind the wheel here it's the quiet cabin you know on the outside this vehicle looks like it should be a very sporty engaging driving experience but it's not 
I think they are misleading in a way that this car is going to be a barn burner on the outside. But when you get inside, you should be pleasantly surprised on how calm it is inside. I think the outside gives you the illusion that you're gonna be whipping around corners and just living it up as a speedster, but it's not that. Even with the F-Sport, that does increase it a little bit with the acceleration and the firmness of the steering. But inside, I feel like this is a luxury a crossover that should appeal to a large audience. So in a way, they've brought the audience in with this really cool exterior styling, and I love this blue color, so in a way, I'm even drawn to it even more. But they say, hey, here is the shiny object. Here is the beautiful exterior. Come on inside and enjoy what the driving would really be like in a luxury crossover. So in a way, it's good and bad. They have a good driving experience, but it's not what it looks like on the outside. My third and final dislike has some positives with it. And the main dislike, if I have to have one, is its acceleration isn't as awesome as I would like it to be. But the positive is you have different drive modes with this, a different drive select option. So as I mentioned, there's Eco, Normal, Custom, Sport S, and Sport Plus. So let's say I'm gonna drive right here. I'll pause, this is a, an open road here in the country. No one's gonna be around. I'm going to accelerate in normal. Let's make sure it's a uh, normal mode. Here is normal mode. So I'm gonna accelerate and see what I'm talking about with uh, its lack of punch. Three, two, one, go. That's flooring it. I can really hear the CVT, and that's enough right there. So it's not really fast off the line. Some numbers I've seen are around seven seconds or so for zero to 60 times, but I don't recall what, they, what mode they dro drove that in. But if I put it over into Sport S Plus, higher rev point, a little tighter steering, and now it gets sporty. So the driver select mode gives you some options, although your base option is not gonna get you from point A to point B as fast as you would like. But good thing, they have an S plus and an S to get you there a little bit faster. So the base MSRP is right around 50 grand, give or take. As tested today, 62.5. Why 62.5? Because we have every possible upgrade and package available on this vehicle. So what do you think about my three likes and dislikes? Do you agree? Do you have any you'd like to suggest or add to it? Leave in the comment section below. While you're at it, please click subscribe. I really appreciate your support. Until next time, I'm Dave Erickson with Everyman Driver. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Adios. One final note, if you are in the market for a new vehicle soon, great. Connect with your local dealership and price and test drive at least three different vehicles. A vehicle's strengths and weaknesses can only be discovered when you are behind the wheel. My reviews can be good, but you need to test drive these yourself. Visit quotes.everymandriver.com, select the make model in your zip code, and you'll get invoice pricing in your area on those vehicles. Shop smarter with price quotes at quotes.everymandriver.com. Thanks for watching. Please cl click subscribe and give us a thumbs up. See you next time.